Hey guys, Greg here. It's the Vinyl Rundown, and today I'm going to do something I haven't done in a long time. A weird kind of video. A video about records that I actually listen to. Not ones that I just picked up at the store, not one that I pulled out from random, but actually I listened to all of these records in the last couple days, and I'll tell you why. There's an interesting story behind it, and it has to do with... Uh, I bought some new speakers, which I featured in uh, a whole review on the new Buchart S400 speakers. I'm in the middle of my 30-day uh, free home trial from Denmark. If I don't like them, I have to send them back to Denmark. And these speakers have been hooked up to four different stereos in the last couple of weeks. Last night, I finally hit the jackpot. I finally hooked them up to my really good amplifier, my uh, Sonograph Conrad Johnson. And uh, it was just, it, it all sounded great. It all finally fell into place. So, a lot of this is, hey, I gotta listen to a bunch of records to see if I like these speakers and really kinda figure out what they sound like. But so many of my videos have been about, here's a bunch of records I just bought. I may never listen to them. I don't know anything about them. These are records, oh my god, this is like, what is this, 12 records? Ton of records. So this one I listened to a couple days ago actually. Whiplash, and I talked about this in another video, the music from Whiplash. I was really disappointed in the pressing quality. The side two is so freaking noisy. Had I listened to this carefully when we bought the record, I probably would have taken it back, but you know, we got it online probably. Uh, I really like this movie. Not everybody does, but uh, anyway, really disappointed that the pressing is terrible, even though the music is good. Okay, here's a major star of this video. So, why did I not listen to this record until like four days after it came in the mail? This was a uh, present or a, a prize from Mazzy for his last contest. Usually I'll rip open a record right away if I get it like that. But uh, because of the whole stereo thing and the, the speakers were not hooked up to the right amplifier and I was moving all the stuff around, rewiring, I didn't really get to listen to it until last night. I listened to disc one twice on two different amplifiers to, to the new speakers, which got hooked up and rehooked up. Long story. Anyway, this, this is like a documentary on disc. Chavez Ravine. Right Cooter, I've talked about it now three videos in a row, but I finally listened to it. Uh, not what I expected, better than I expected. This is like a documentary on vinyl. The story of uh, Chavez Ravine, the area in Los Angeles that was completely cleared out of all uh, low-income Hispanic families to make room for the LA Dodgers, who we all know and love now and who are in first place and will probably be in the World Series. Uh, but, and I opened up the uh, shrink wrap yesterday for the first time also, and there's a really great book in here. Uh, like I say, this is like a documentary on vinyl. Beautiful book, beautiful writings. Just sitting and listening, uh, I was learning stuff. Like they mentioned Richard Neutra, is it Neutra or Neutra? I didn't know he was one of the architects of the uh, Dodger Stadium area. Uh, I probably learned some other stuff. So there's a lot of collage stuff on here, like uh, sound collage, tying in sort of vintage clips from uh, maybe uh, LAPD or news broadcasts of the period 1950s. I like that whole aspect. I didn't realize. I thought it was just going to be Ray Cooter singing a bunch of songs in Spanish. There's a whole um, layers of sound going on here so I've listened to disc one twice and it is a good sounding record and it's good music and uh, it takes some careful attention it's not just good time rock and roll it's you gotta listen pay attention to the lyrics okay here's a record that's wait I'm gonna I'm giving you these 12 whatever records in the order that I listen to them believe it or not I wanted to hear some modern music on these new speakers, so TV on the radio. This is one of the hippest records that I've ever shown on the uh, vinyl community because most of my records are old and jazzy and old-fashioned, but 
This is a pretty hip indie band from New York, TV on the radio. I think this is their last record, Nine Types of Light. We're hearing some TV on the radio live, by the way. It's music. Is it TV? Is it on the radio? It's a weird name for a band, but it's artsy, I guess. Um, hard to describe this band. You know, indie, what does that mean? doesn't mean much. Uh, the, the band is, is mostly black guys, I'll just mention, because it doesn't really sound like anything like rap or hip-hop or soul. They have a really unique sound. Uh, on the artsy side, they have a lot of punk influences. And I'm going to throw out the name David Bowie. Not that they sound like David Bowie, but the fact that they put so much different sound into each song. They don't have a formula where each, each song is cookie cutter. Each album is different, each song is different. Um, Nine Types of Light, when this record was released, they released a full-length film at the same time of the same name. And that's really just all the uh, music videos kind of stitched together with some other documentary-ish stuff in the middle. But I think it used 10 different creative visual artists. So visually, these guys are really cool. The soundscapes are really cool. Uh, Sound-wise, on my good new speakers, the big song on here, Will Do, kind of a hit for them, didn't sound that good. The bass sounded totally compressed, like they sucked all of the, all of the life out of the bass on this track. There's a lot of good layering and sounds going on here. Uh, you know, a lot of electric guitar and synthesizers and interesting sounds. But I wonder if they had to tone down the bass to not, uh, you know, pop out of the groove on the vinyl record. I purposely grabbed this because I thought the bass would be sort of modern and, uh, and forward, but good record, good song. Just that one complaint is the bass is light. Uh, all right, then I switched over to something really lush. West Montgomery down here on the road on the A&M CTI label. CTI stuff is really high production value, very slick studio sounds. Very lush. Uh, the sound on these speakers, uh, Wes Montgomery's guitar, just a big fat sounding guitar, really sounded great. Lush. This was only eight bucks. I got a record surplus a couple weeks ago, uh, and I'm really pleased that I got it. I got to get all all the CTI stuff. Uh, I was going to show you the inside, but there's nothing to show. Who plays on here? Ron Carter, Grady Tate, Herbie Hancock. I already featured this when I bought the record, but and I've listened to it five, six times in the last couple weeks and really enjoyed the sound quality. The later stuff in uh, West Montgomery's career is a little more commercial, more pop tunes and less jazzy, but it still sounds great. A lot of artists didn't really fare well when they went kind of for the poppier commercial away from jazz, but West Montgomery, his early stuff, his late stuff, his middle stuff, it's all great. Okay, I was picking records that I knew the sound of pretty well, or that I knew the sound quality was good, so what band comes to mind? Steely Dan, of course, the greatest uh, sort of studio artistry production of the 70s. Um, this, this is a, a great record that y'all should have. Um, Side one, Kid Charlemagne is an amazing tune. So listening on my new speakers, I really noticed the sort of grittiness of Larry Carlton's guitar that really kind of popped out. And uh, Don't Take Me Alive is an amazing song. And uh, this is a great record. You guys should have this record. You should have a couple copies. And then following with more Steely Dan, one of their more one of their later records with a less raunchier and an even more slick sound Asia. Deacon Blue, great, great rich sounding vocals, sounded great on my new speakers. Everybody knows this record, right? Asia. Oh, Boring Gatefold, just text, classic black. Okay, what else do we have here? Which of these did I listen to last night? Can you guess? What's the difference? So the reason why this is kind of a good record to uh, test out speakers on 
the drum solo on take five. Uh, it's very sparse. And I heard stuff that I'd never heard before. I could hear I could hear the 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 drum head of the tom tom resonating, even though it wasn't being hit, it was resonating because of all the other vibrations, what they call sympathetic vibrations. I had never heard that before, so listening to my new speakers sounded cool. So what's the difference between these two vinyl community, in case you don't know? This is original, because it's just the name. This is a later reissue, because they broke out and added the name of the songs. They didn't know what the hit song was going to be when they first came out with it. When they reissued it, they realized that there were two big hit songs, so they featured that on the uh, record cover. So, Columbia, that is a 6i. That is a dollar's worth at a thrift store. I have at least three copies on vinyl. One thing I noticed about that song, Take Five, there's no Dave Brubeck on that song. He's doing nothing. He's just playing the same. Repetition, no improvisation. All the improvisation is from uh, the drummer and Paul Desmond on sax. I just happened to notice that. Y'all probably knew it, but how about some Irish whiskey, guys? I gotta get through all these records, guys. We're not even halfway through. On the None Such label, Chris Teal on mandolin. Which is which? These guys look alike. That's Chris Teal, and that's Brad Meldow. Great, great jazz piano player. This is kind of a uh, innovative record. Piano and mandolin, and that's it. And Chris sings on a few of the tunes. Um, when I first got this, maybe a year ago, it was a present for my wife. I probably would have picked it out for myself, even though I love Brad Meldow. I didn't really know anything about Chris Teal. Um, Last night was the first time I really got to enjoy it and really kind of got into the music. Um, let's see, Chris Teal, you may know him because he's now uh, the replacement on uh, Prairie Home Companion, replacing Garrison Keillor, uh, much younger. So the tune on here that really struck me, it's one of my favorites, is called Independence Day. You can't see that. Independence Day is actually a tune uh, written by Elliot Smith, the uh, great folky independent songwriter, I should say, who committed suicide in L.A. a number of years ago. First time I ever heard that song, Independence Day, was Brad Meldau playing it on the piano when I saw him live at the uh, Knitting Factory in L.A. Fell in love with the tune. I have a couple different versions, but uh, this sounded great last night, and the music is really good, but it's... I don't know what to say about it. Check it out, guys. Chris Teal and Brad Meldow. I got tons of Brad Meldow records. Very much in the Bill Evans style of very fluid, free-flowing, melodic piano. Brad Meldow says he doesn't listen to Bill Evans and is in the, listen to classical music and didn't know or care about Bill Evans. Thought that was weird. Here's a record I don't see featured on the VC. What's up, up with you guys? Van Morrison is great. Everybody knows his, his early stuff, Tupelo Honey. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody feature this record. Uh, a Sense of Wonder. One of my favorite records of his from sort of his later period, I guess. 1984. Tore Down a la Rimbo. Great sounding record. Really a pleasure to listen to it. Uh, on the new system last night. So, uh, this record is easy to find for a few bucks all over the place. Okay, oh, we are getting near the end. I'm going faster than I thought I was. This sounded freaking amazing last night. Sarah Vaughn on the MRC label. Uh, what's it called? Is it just called Sarah Vaughn? It's just called Sarah Vaughn. This is a Japanese import I got for only five, uh, six bucks. And uh, vinyl quality is great on here. It's Japanese. The performance is great. The recording is great. The musicianship is great. This is mono. And on a really good system, mono sounds fantastic because you have this huge, uh, well defined center image. Sarah's voice is coming right out of the middle of the two speakers, right in front of you. It sounds amazing. And this record had a lot of 
depth and reverberation that sounded really good. Uh, Lullaby of Birdland, when you hear those lower re registers in her voice, that sounded amazing. This has an all-star cast of jazz musicians. Clifford Brown on trumpet, uh, Herbie Mann, uh, who else? Jimmy Jones. So, highly recommended if you like jazz vocals. Even if you don't like jazz vocals, get into it with a record like this. Sarah Vaughn. Wow. I gotta listen to that again. That was great. Okay, what else? So we're down to the end. I got through the whole pile. There's no record in here, because it's still on the turntable. John Hyatt. This is a signed copy. I didn't go meet him or anything. They had one of these, I don't know, they had it at, uh, what's that store? <laughs> Barnes & Noble, I guess. Yeah, it says Barnes & Noble. Uh, the Eclipse Session. He recorded this during a, is it a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse? So, that's why he chose that name. John Hyatt does not get enough love on the vinyl community. He is one of the premier singer-songwriters of the last 30 years. He keeps getting better with age. His last three or four records are amazing. I've seen him play twice. I went to see him play uh, at a small club here in LA. I really knew nothing about him and somebody invited me to go see him. And I was blown away. I loved every song. I loved the performance. I went out and got a bunch of his records only to find out that my wife has all of his old records. But she likes his old stuff. I like his new stuff. Okay, guys, that is a massive... Oh, my gosh. So the message is, with a new system that sounds good, sounds really good, I'm more drawn into listening to music and spending more time listening than all the other nonsense. Reading about records online. Not watching you guys is not nonsense, but to spend more time watching videos about records and more time shopping for records and more time organizing records than actually listening to records. That's That was a bad place I had gotten into. And actually I wasn't enjoying it that much because the system in my bedroom didn't sound that good. The system in the living room sounds great. Uh, very high-end stuff. I'm trying to build a medium high-end in the bedroom so I can listen anytime I want without disturbing the family. But. Uh, Hope you guys are listening on good systems where you really hear that stereo separation and that center image and all that stuff. It makes such a huge difference. And the other thing I learned last night was I switched amplifiers on my new speakers. And going from a uh, AV receiver, it's really not designed for super high fidelity. Moving that aside and hooking up a really kind of high-end audiophile grade amplifier SA250 by Conrad Johnson sonograph line um, 250 watts 125 aside and these are four ohm speakers so it's even more uh, power linearity low distortion it really takes you to the next level so I was not that crazy about these speakers turns out I wasn't listening on great great amplifier uh, switching to the new amplifier Huge difference. Maybe it's maybe I'm listening to the amplifier sounds great and the speakers aren't. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to to to, to tell. So guys, that's it. I actually listened to a dozen records. I'm proud of myself. I got to do more of that. Uh, thank you a lot for watching. I really want to hear uh, any com any and all comments, except about my own appearance. I've had enough of that. Okay. I know what I look like. Just kidding, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.